Colgate University was founded by 13 men with $13 and 13 Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the drill. Everything college, everything Colgate. It's Gate Code. So there's Frank Dining Hall, there's the Coop, and there's the Edge, and then there's the Library Cafe. That place is great. If you're not, if you're trying not to see someone, be it like someone you're not talking to, or like a past hookup, or you know what I mean, old flight, whatever, don't go to Frank because you will literally see everyone there, and it's uncomfortable. So Frank, oh Frank, if you ask for an omelet, they'll give you a circle of eggs. I love the people that work there. They're awesome. They're all really friendly, um, especially like the omelet people. My thing about Frank is that there are a lot of different options. There are a lot of different things that you can get in Frank. There's omelets, there's the regular grill station, there's what I like to call the hotline, which is the regular entree, uh, pizza, salad, sandwiches, bagels. So like, if you go in there, like you will find something. But there are also days when you walk into Frank and you just feel like life is pointless. I personally don't mind Frank. A lot of people hate Frank. But you have to like know the tips and tricks of Frank. You have to like work with everything that's in front of you. You know, you gotta get rice from one station and then get the chicken from the salad bar and put it all together and get chicken and rice and maybe add like little flares here and there. You have to make Frank work for you. If you don't make it work for you, you're just gonna end up eating a bagel every day. Uh, the coop is kind of like your fast food option, open all hours, but it's pricey. I don't go to Coop that much either, just because a lot of fast food there, so I'm trying to be like healthy, you know, uh, eating healthily. The Edge is great. The Edge is a good time. It's a really weird place. It's very big and no one really goes there. Yeah, it's it's kind of creepy, The Edge. There's, um, it's like that scene in Jurassic Park where they're in the restaurant where there's nobody, it's not open. It's like this scene in Jurassic Park where there's, where there's like dinosaur tapestries. It's just bizarre. And the edge is like an idea that never really grew. Um, the food's pretty good. First time I had boneless wings at Donovan's was like, I was so happy. Like, there was not words to describe how much like I loved those boneless wings at the time. Cause like I love boneless wings and like Buffalo anything. I'm an upperclassman and I live up the hill um, in one of the freshman um, residence halls and I'm still on the meal plan and all my friends are not on the meal plan. So it's really lonely when I have to eat dinner by myself and everyone probably thinks that I'm a sad lonely freshman that has no friends when in reality, I'm a great awesome upperclassman that has so many friends. I am a junior now and I do have a kitchen, which is really great most times, but it means that I have to worry about buying my own food, which means that we have come to the point in my life where I have to worry about getting to the grocery store when I don't have a car, and my roommates don't have a car, and my friends don't have a car. I know one person with a car, and I feel awful every week saying, hey, can you please drive me and six other people to Price Chopper because we are afraid that we are going to get abandoned by the cruiser. The hardest part about cooking for myself is not is making ramen and Annie's mac and cheese every single night. Because, you know, part of, part of me when I'm, when I'm making dinner, it's like, oh, it's like Annie's mac and cheese. It's, it's good for you. It's like all organic. You're, you're great, but then you forget that you're just eating cheese and carbs and like not the best things for you. The weather. Um I don't think the sun exists anymore. That's definitely I think God hates us. I was going to the gym this morning and the sun like appeared through the clouds and I was like, oh my God, what's up? I haven't seen you in so long. Yesterday it was it wasn't even in the 30s and I was walking around like jeans and like bean boots and like a sweatshirt and that was it. I was like, this is a warm day. Before I come here, like in t to America, I don't even know there's a word called wind chill. I don't know what that means. I don't know how to spell it. I don't know like what it would be like. And after I got here, I got an email like last month, no, yeah, last month, said uh, there will be a wind chill. And I asked my, my roommate, like, what is a wind chill? And she was like, seriously? Um, so welcome to Colgate. 
is like walking in the wind and chill and snow like without opening your eyes because you really like, couldn't do that. I would have to describe the weather here as just overall like offensive. Everyone's miserable um, and you're just constantly, it's like an arctic, like apocalyptic wasteland. The one time that class has been canceled, like school-wide since I've been at Colgate, was during Hurricane Sandy when we were supposed to have a hurricane, but we're so far inland that it was just a sort of like rainy day. So that night, me and my friends all went out puddle jumping and like it was fun because there were like high winds and then the day class was actually canceled, it wasn't even raining. And Hurricane Sandy ruined it for all of us because now Colgate will not cancel another class for another six decades because they know the last time they canceled class, nothing happened. So now you get like, oh, hey, you know, there's going to be like a negative 30 degree wind chill out today. Uh, if you stay outside for more than 10 minutes, you'll probably get frostbite. Uh, just walk quickly. So freshman year, we have a really mild winter my freshman year, um, but there was, of course, still snow and ice. And I saw one of the signs on the buildings that says, beware of falling snow and ice. And I laughed at this sign because I thought, why would they put this sort of sign on a building? And then. A huge fucking icicle came down and smashed on the ground, and I have not laughed since. But you know, a sign that really bothers me is the signs coming up the stairs out of the edge, and it's this little sign with like a little guy going like this. He's like doing a really cool little move, and the sign says, "Slippery conditions may exist." Well, of course they exist because the stairs are never shoveled. The ones like right next to Brian, like going down towards like Cutting, those steps are literally, it's like a slide, like. You literally have to like ski down that with your boots on. One time I was leaving Frank and I, you know, I did a, I did a, a slip on that slope and, and uh, you know, I did a quick look around to see if anyone had seen and a few girls had, but they were like in the distance. So I just kind of like, I was trying to like smile at them, but it was too far for them to even have noticed. <laughs> It's not that bad after it's been like one semester or so. We'll get used to it. The jug is basically like a frat basement at street level. If you've ever sobered the jug, you'll realize that it's just a room with a bunch of drunk girls happy in the middle and a bunch of drunk guys kind of like teetering on the edges with just this dumb look in their eye. I've heard like from some friends like you can go sober and it's really fun A because you get to watch drunk people uh, and probably B because you get to watch drunk people. It's like plan F. If like you have nowhere else to go, at least for me, it's like the last resort kind of place to go. It really depends like what you want to get accomplished because you know, I feel like if you're too sober or too like observant or if you're just in a bad mood earlier, it's going to be a horrible time. It just reeks of regret and bad decisions. Ladies, my advice for you when you go to the jug, don't worry that there's like 12 other girls in the bathroom. It happens. Guys, don't be creepy. Don't just like grab a girl and start dancing with her because that's creepy. Just ask her. No one really cares if you ask. People like you better if you ask. Don't take valuables and give yourself to the night. <laughs> If you haven't been there, um, just you're fortunate and maybe maybe keep it that way. <laughs> Up to now, I've never been to the jug before. It's sort of the thing that you have to do. Well, it's not you have to, but like you're like you go to Colgate and then like why not? And then just, just, just like other things like eating friends or something like that. It's one of the things on your to-do list like before I graduate. So maybe at some point. I want to go to the jug to say that I have been to the jug but I don't anticipate going more than three times in the next two years because I am a 21 year old who can buy my own alcohol and get drunk in my own apartment. So why am I going to go with a herd of other people I don't know when I can get drunk watching Harry Potter by myself? Oh no, I have drug stories, but none that I would like to share. <laughs> so I was dancing with this guy who was a lot taller than me which isn't really that hard because I'm not that tall. So we're dancing with each other and then kind of like turned me around to make out with me. And I was like, okay, whatever. Like this is what happens at the jug. And it was, it was really bad. It was really, really, really bad. And that's with bad hookups, this was really bad. 
So I knew that I wasn't gonna be bringing him home, like I wasn't going with him, nothing was happening, it had to stop. I walk away and I'm, I'm running my hands over my face. I was actually wearing the same lipstick that I am at the moment. And I feared the lipstick was all over my face and in doing so I ran my hand down my chin and there was drool all down my chin from the boy that I had just been hooking up with. When I was leaving with this guy, um, we were walking across the ice and I slipped and he was like so embarrassed, like, get up, get up, come on. My parents came up for parents weekend and we had this big sign in our hallway that's like right, right outside my door. And it's like advice and people write on it. Um, and you know, one of, them was, one of them said, buy a jug jacket. And my dad asked me, he goes, Maki, what's a jug jacket? <laughs> like, uh, um. People tell you, make sure you have a jug jacket. People don't tell you what the qualifications of a jug jacket are. Because to me, as someone who's never been, I was just like, okay, that's a jacket that you don't really care about losing. But that's only one quality of a jug jacket. Because when you're thinking about the jacket, you're not thinking about how long you have to stand on line outside. A jug jacket is still a coat. It is not a sweatshirt that you're okay with losing. Make that distinction for yourself and don't get frostbite trying to go to the jug. I don't go that much anymore. I really don't. I try to stick to the other locations around town because I've once you're 21, you have other options. But until then, you kind of, yeah, the jug is where it's at.